Hey everyone, it's Courtney Shavante back with a resin shaker roach clip tutorial. Before we do get started, make sure you do hit that subscribe button for me and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss any videos that I do put out because I do have a lot coming your way. So to get started, what we're going to be doing is we're going to take our little alligator clips and we have some parchment paper that we're going to be working on top of with this liquid latex so it doesn't stick to our surface. Go ahead and pour just a little bit of your liquid latex into a tiny little cup. I'm using this little medicine cup. I only have maybe about 5 milliliters of it in here. I'm going to coat the entire bottom of that alligator clip in this liquid latex. This is going to create a nice protective coating, a nice little barrier for our resin so that way the resin doesn't stick to our alligator clip. I zoomed in for you so that way you can kind of see me um, trying to pour the liquid latex down into the inside of that alligator clip. All right, you just want to make sure it's coated on all sides. Make sure all major parts are covered, especially the ones that are used um, when you're bending and opening the alligator clip. Alright guys, so this part what we're going to do is we're just going to spray some alcohol, make sure that mold is clean, use a q-tip since these are kind of small, and you're just going to get inside those little crevices so that way there's no leftover color or anything like that from a previous pour or any lint or debris. Once you got that cleaned off and everything, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and dry it off. For one yeah go ahead and draw that off then go ahead and open up your pink hollow powder from here you're gonna go ahead and dust the inside of this mold I'm going to be doing a little ombre effect on these so I'm only going to be dusting half of the mold and then I'm going to kind of fade it out when I get towards the middle as you could see here so on this one I'm going from the top towards the middle getting in those ears making sure there's no space that I missed then I'm gonna redip my brush and on this one I'm gonna start from the bottom up so you see me um, painting in that little tail area and then I come upwards towards the face like brushing just a little bit onto the face but not much because that's where I'm gonna start blending it out at go ahead and close that up because you don't want it to spill because you make the wrong move that powder will go everywhere so look inside the mold you see how I have this cut right here I'm going to show you how I cut on the other one I just get a little exacto knife and I'm going to cut a slit just a tiny slit all you need is one little quick motion really and then um, from there it should be deep enough yeah see how that is you don't want it to go all the way down just enough to be able to hold the alligator clip so you're going to take those alligator clips that we had covered in the liquid latex previously and you're just going to go ahead and insert that into the mold and then clamp it down using another alligator clip you see me balancing these tiny little molds on top of some doming blocks just to make it a little bit easier because the resin is going to seep out just a tad out those holes because it's not a seamless cut. But it's okay because with the liquid latex that's going to make it really easy to clean up and that's why we put that on there and you'll see that soon. Make sure everything's adjusted perfectly. You don't want that um, alligator clip that's clamping down to get touched by the resin so make sure that it's in a good spot 
and from here you're going to go ahead and prepare your colored resin i chose a blue color that i prepared off camera it's a little bit left over from a previous pour that i did for an ashtray and you're going to see me just kind of fill these molds up and everything and make sure that i have a nice little even layer on here you can see that blue use a toothpick to go inside the little cavities make sure no bubbles pop up especially with these being so small it's very easy for them too so pull in with that heat gun as well to thin that resin out you'll see them come to the surface so you may have to alternate a bit between the heat gun and that toothpick but that's completely fine once you've gotten all the bubbles out, go ahead and pour the little bit of resin left remaining on top so that way you can cover the mold. Alright, make sure that's sitting up nice and even so that way it doesn't um, spill spray with some alcohol to pop any bubbles that do rise and we're going to let that stand for a few hours all right so after we let that stand i'm just going to use a little bit of resin um, to add a thin a layer to the top because a little bit did drip out through that hole like i told you so it did leave a bit of a cavity so we're going to just fill that up using a little bit of clear and then we're just going to allow that to cure as well. All right, so after you wait for that to cure, you're going to go ahead and wiggle this out of the mold and pop that right on out. Once you get it out, you're also able to pull off that liquid latex as well. As you can see, that extra resin comes up pretty easily. Now on this one, it did seep inside a bit, but it's fine. I'm just going to use my pliers here to pull and pop that right on out. It's a little bit difficult to get the plier in there, but once I do, I'm able to get it out as you can see here. Okay, so once you've finished with that one, go ahead and demold the other one, follow the same steps. This one didn't give me as many issues as the other one did, so this one was a lot more simple to go ahead and finish up. So I'm just going ahead and pull off the remaining of that liquid latex there, and then we're going to just clean this area up right quick. Alright, so once we got our area clean, you're going to go ahead and get a little bit of painter's tape. Um, just roll that up and put it in an area that's not going to be in the way. So that way you can still see the general outline of the shape of the shaker. So go ahead and line those up. I went ahead and got a nice little square of clear film that I did link below for you. And, and you see me tracing this with a Sharpie marker. I'm going to do a nice little thick outline and I'm going to make sure I'm tracing the outer edge of the shaker mold because we're going to be cutting on the inside of it. So go ahead and pull that back up, pull off that painter's tape and pull it off to the side and grab your scissors and you're going to go ahead and cut the inside of that black line just like I was telling you about. So. Let's go ahead and speed this on up here because this is boring and it takes a little while. So as you're cutting and when you finish cutting it out, just make sure that it does fit on top of the molds as you're going. So just place it on top of there and make sure that it's flush and also make sure that any little black pieces, any residue from that Sharpie marker are cut off as well. Alright, so once you finish with that, you're going to go ahead and get a paper towel, um, spray that those 
pieces of transparency that you cut out in the shapes down with alcohol and just wipe them really well so there are no smudge marks on them. I went ahead and pre-placed my charms inside of each shaker just because with these long nails it's kind of hard to do. I didn't want you guys to see me struggling on camera. I really just dropped them in there. I dropped three of um, three in each cavity. I also have some glitter prepared as well but I mixed that off camera. So I'll go ahead and just scoop that glitter into the shaker mold. How much you choose is up to you. What type of glitter you put in there is up to you. Um, I do suggest using a chunkier glitter and then throwing in some sequins or something a little bit heavier as well, such as one of my charms that you can find on my Etsy store, just because it helps the glitter move around as well because the glitter itself isn't that heavy. From here, go ahead and grab your UV resin. You're going to take this UV resin and you're just going to trace it around the outside where you traced um, that with that black um, Sharpie marker at. And you're going to go around and make sure you have a nice thick layer here but not too thick to where it seeps over. And you're just going to place that transparency right on top and push it down slightly. Make sure it's nice and taut. And then grab your black light or your UV light, whatever you decide to use. And go ahead and just kind of hold that over there. It's going to take maybe about 45 seconds or so to finish this part. Alright, so once you finish with that one, go ahead and repeat the same steps for the other one. You're going to do the same exact thing, tracing with that UV resin. And then you're going to place that transparency on top and make sure it's nice and taut. Had a smudge on there, had to make sure I get it off right quick. I'm a perfectionist, so I don't like my stuff to be messed up. But I went ahead, placed that on there nice and taut, like I said. This one is off place just a tad, but it's okay. I'm just going to add a little bit of UV resin on top to fill in the little bit of holes that I do notice. And then that's going to seal it before uh, we go on to our next step and everything. So. Just go ahead and seal with the black light and get that to holding and then we'll move on to the next thing. So I went ahead and prepped a bit more resin and from here I'm just going to add a clear doming layer on top. So this is just going to seal everything in nicely and make sure that nothing is able to seep out from our shaker and make sure everything nice is nice and flush. So make sure you do go over that UV resin as well and go ahead and pull it all the way to that edge and make sure it's nice and even. Try to make sure there aren't any holes in this layer because it will be slightly, it, it will be pretty noticeable, especially if anyone's rubbing their fingers across. Let that stand about 12 hours or so and then we're going to take our drill. From here you're going to drill into one of the apexes. Now the apex is just considered like one of the highest points in ever, whatever you're drilling at. And that's just going to make it easier when you're dealing with the bubbles and everything. Now make sure that the holes are big enough because they're going to have to be big enough to be able to fit this needle in. As you can see I had to go back in and make sure I just widened that a bit and then I was able to um, get my needle bottle in there. Now this bottle is filled with baby oil so it's super cheap. It's very simple it makes sure it doesn't mess up the coloration of any of the charms or the glitters that you are using so I personally love to use it make sure that you do clean with 
a alcohol and a rag so that way you do not um, have any issues when you are sealing this later now um, you're going to be sealing this using the UV resin so just add a tiny little drop on top and then from there you grab your black light and seal that down from there I'm going to be adding another layer this one's going to be slightly larger and they're going to increase in size just a bit overlapping each other and you're going to do about two to three layers of this whatever you feel like is a good idea and what you feel comfortable with wipe with the alcohol rag between each layer as well and that's going to make sure that any excess oil that may still be lying around does get picked up all right so after you finish curing this you're going to go ahead and set it to the side and then you're going to repeat the same exact steps for the next one All right, so from here, you're going to get your little glue on bales that I get from Amazon. Super easy to put on and attach. And I got some E6000 glue as well. I'm going to just get a little bit of my E6000 glue and add it on to the back of this bale like so. All you need is just a tiny little bit to hold it on there. And then I'm going to attach it onto the ear, the same ear where I do have that hole at. I'm going to repeat the step for the other one as well. From there, you're just going to let it dry in the windowsill. I like to put it in direct sunlight so that UV resin has a chance to completely cure. Alright, so once that's had a chance to cure, you're going to go ahead and grab your jump rings and you're going to get your key rings. These jump rings do come pre-opened, so that's great, and it, they are nice and sturdy, so I do trust these on these key chains that we're going to be making here. So you're going to um, just get your pliers, and then when you get your pliers, you are able to go ahead and attach the key ring, and then from there you're able to add that onto that bale that we glued onto the key ring, and then just use the pliers to close that. Repeat that for the second shaker as well. Now, ta-da! These are our babies. So this is how our shaker roach clips turned out. They are super, super cute. You can see the charms and the glitter just moving around inside each of them. Um, I love how the ombre effects look and how it's just something really fun to play with when you're, you know, all elevated and everything, having a good time. They have nice key rings so that way you can carry them around and always have them with you. The roach clips on the bottom make it super easy to not only um, smoke the rest of your product with, but also if you have long nails, you can grab your card. So that's a super bomb benefit. If you love this video, make sure you comment, like, and also subscribe to my channel. I love hearing from you guys and I can't wait to talk to you guys soon. See you for the next video. Bye now.